This video is brought to you by our amazing supporters over at Patreon. Hey everyone, it's Ben from Board to Bits, and you may have been noticed I've been on kind of a space kick for the past few weeks, and we're going to be wrapping that up over these next two videos with a tutorial about making orbit paths so you can simulate things like solar systems and satellites moving around planets. In order to make an orbit path, however, it's important to understand how both ellipses and circles work in Unity. As a quick disclaimer here, you could just use the rotate around method on a transform to get a quick circular orbit, but it has its limitations. First, it only works as a perfect circle, and it's also going to rotate your object by the same angle that it revolves, which may not be what you're looking for if you're looking for like a kind of a custom rotation of your planet. So it helps to have a deeper understanding to be able to customize this kind of effect. Let's start with circles. If you watched my planet ring video, you know that we created two circles of vertices that made up our ring mesh. We calculated these using the angle around the circle, the sine and cosine of that angle, and a set radius. The important takeaway here is why we use the sine and the cosine. For our purposes, the sine and cosine of an angle in radians will give you the horizontal and vertical position of a point along the edge of that circle. Find enough of these points and you'll get something that looks like a curve that will represent that circle in your game space. Now, without a specified radius, the sine and cosine assume a radius of 1. If we want to change that, we need to multiply both dimensions by our desired radius. This is how we get the inner and outer edges of that planet ring. So, with all that under our belts, we can now look at how an ellipse works. Technically speaking, an ellipse is based on two points called foci. At any point around the edge of the ellipse, the sum of the distance to both of those foci will be constant. As a result, the height and width of an ellipse do not actually need to be the same as with a circle. In fact, a circle is just a special kind of ellipse where both foci are in the exact same place. We can call this way of making an ellipse the focus approach. It's actually more physically accurate, and if you want to make a true space simulation, this would be the way to do it. But we're making video games here, so we can ignore physics and make ellipses that look right and fit our game instead. Instead of the appro focus approach, we can also make an ellipse by predetermining the height and width that we want. Remember with the circle, the sine and the cosine determined the horizontal and vertical point, and then we multiplied that by our radius to result in the circle. Well, if we multiply the height result by one value and the width by a different value, we still get a round object, but now it's an ellipse. We can call this the dimensions approach because we're using the dimensions we want to craft an ellipse that fits the size that we want. We can prove this all out pretty quickly just by using a line renderer and a custom script. So let's jump into Unity and see how it works. So here in Unity, we're going to create a new 2D project, and I'm just going to call this Ellipse Demo, and we'll create this project. Here in the project view, we're going to create an empty game object, and I'm going to call this Ellipse, and I'm going to add to it a component for the line renderer, as well as a component that is actually going to be a new script which I'm going to call ellipse. And that will create that in our assets folder. Um, I'm not going to worry about file management right now because we really are only dealing with this one script. I'm going to open that up in Mono Develop. And what we have here is our basic mono behavior. We can get rid of the start and update functions for now. We're not going to need them. We are going to need a few things, however. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make this um, class require a component type of line renderer. And what that will do is just make sure that we do have one attached whenever we use this particular script. In here, I'm going to say line renderer ILR so we can get a reference to that. And I'm actually going to create a quick awake function that will be sure to get that reference when we start up our game. So we'll say lr equals get component line renderer. We need a couple other um, pop, um, settings that we can set manually. So I'm going to first create a range attribute between 3 and 36. And that is going to be for a public int called segments. And this is how many segments we're going to have in our particular ellipse. Um, this obviously doesn't affect the ellipse itself, but affects how we perceive that ellipse. If it's only got, say, six segments, it's going to look more like a polygon, whereas if it has all 36, it's going to look more round for us. I'm also going to have a public float called x-axis and a public float 
called y-axis. And these are basically those dimensions that we're dealing with in terms of the height and the width of the ellipse. I'm calling them axes. Oops, I need to make sure that's capitalized as well. Try to have good style. Um, the reason we're calling these axes is because in um, actually ellipse mathematical terms, the width is called, or the, the, the largest dimension is called the major axis and the narrower dimension is called the minor axis. So I'm just kind of, kind of keeping that language, but I'm not gonna make it so that we have to have one be larger than the other at this point. Now we're gonna create our actual method to calculate the ellipse. So we'll, and we'll call that calculate ellipse. And in here, we are going to start by creating an array of vector threes. And this is really for the line renderer itself right now, because we have to populate the line renderer with an array of points for it to render. That's gonna be a new vector three array. And it's gonna be the size of segments plus one so that we can complete the full ring around. Line renderers do not, um, at least to my latest knowledge, do not um, have like a looping option. So we'll just do that. And then we will iterate through these points and say for int i equals zero, i is less than segments, i plus plus. And we can say float angle equals I divided by the number of segments. So for each iteration, we're getting closer and closer to that full number of segments. So this is kind of going from zero to 100%. And we wanna cast both of those to floats because we want this to be, like I say, a number between zero and one. Then we're gonna multiply that by 360 to get its equivalent in degrees. And then we're gonna multiply that by the math F degree to radians constant because uh, sine and cosine work in radians, not degrees. From here, we can figure out our x point and our y point. Our x point, we'll say, is equal to math f dot sine of that angle times our x axis value that we establish up here. Actually, I should probably set these for something. Right now, we'll say this is 5f and this is 3f for now. That's fine. Then we'll say float y equals math f cosine angle, and we'll multiply that by our y axis. And then finally, we can set the point at i equal to a new vector three of x, y, and then we'll just do zero for the z value. Now once we're out of here, Remember that we have segments plus one, actually. The very last um, point in our array, we want to be the same as the first. So we can simply say that here, and we can say points segment segments, and not plus one, because plus one is the full length of the array, but remember that we're zero indexing, so we need to actually be one less to, so that we're not outside of the array, equals points zero. So the very last point in the array is equal to the very first point in the array. And then finally, uh, we can set our actual line renderer. Uh, now for uh, Unity 5.6, I know this is actually a little bit different. It used to be you had, I think it was called a vertex count that you would set, um, but I am now in Unity 5.6.1, so I'm gonna be using the newer method, which is um, actually it's a property, it's called position count. And we're going to just be setting that equal to segments plus one. And then we can say set positions and pass in our points array. So that does everything we need. I'm also going to quickly just add a void on validate down here. And in here, I'm going to put the calculate ellipse method. I'm also going to call it right on awake so that we get that right when we start the game. But the reason for the on validate down here is so that if I change values while we're playing the game, we can actually see those change in real time. So now we can jump back over to Unity. And we've got our ellipse here. It's got its values, it's got its segments. I didn't actually set that, so I'm gonna set that up to about 24 for right now. Um, as you can see here, we've got, sort of got positions, but they're really just um, 
just two positions right now. This will populate from the ellipse um, script, and now we can hit play, and we should see our ellipse appear here. And sure enough, it does. It's very wide right now. Um, I can actually, here we can zoom this out a bit, see it a little bit clearer. Oh, it's because that's set to HD here. We're going to do a free aspect. Uh, set the scale back to 1. And I am going to quickly adjust a couple things here so we can see that a little bit better. Um, width, we're just going to make to be about 0.1 instead of um, 1 because that was making it so thick. And I'm okay with it just being pink right now. That just means because we don't have a material applied to it, it's just kind of showing this kind of FPO color. But now we can hit play and it should look, there we go, a lot cleaner. And so here we see, like I see, there's a little bit of um, kind of that segmenting polygon look to it. And that's because we're not, this is only 24 points. It's not a super high resolution, but um, we do create that ellipse. And I can adjust these and we see that those change. And if I make these equal, we basically get a circle. So that's how uh, creating an ellipse using the height and width works. Now we can use that in our next video to, instead of calculate a line renderer, calculate the position of something like a planet or some kind of object orbiting around another one. So uh, that'll be in our next video. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Hey guys, a uh, quick um, addendum to this video, just a heads up. I noticed uh, when I was finishing up this video that I was getting these uh, errors here. And the reason for that is my, in our script here, we have this on validate method. And what that does is it, um, like I said, it updates, or in this case, I'm calling it to calculate the ellipse whenever I change the values in the inspector. I forgot that this actually defaults to running even in edit mode. And so that's why when I changed the values in edit mode, um, there this hadn't run, so there was no line renderer to tell um, Unity what to work with. So that's why it's kind of calling that error. So we can really easily solve that simply by saying down here, if application dot is playing, then we calculate the ellipse and otherwise it'll just skip this. So that should now let us jump back here and I can adjust this yeah, without getting any errors now because we're not trying to affect this without a reference, the line renderer without a reference to it. So that kind of just saves us. It's not a major issue. It's not going to you know completely crash our system, but it's one less error to have to deal with. So um, and once again, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.